Hey, good morning and welcome to the United Stand. This is your Ole Gunnar Solskjaer press conference reaction for Newcastle versus Manchester United. It's the first press conference since the transfer window closed. It's the first press conference since the 6-1 drubbing by Spurs and it's the first chance the press have been able to ask Ole about the transfers, the new players. Paul Pogba saying he wants to go to Real Madrid and of course the Harry Maguire issues. So much to talk about as well as the three Ps. The three Ps that Oli faces a bit of a backlash from. Pochettino, players and the Pogba issue, which is always an issue. But look, one thing I want to say at the very start, because I'll forget if I don't say it. For all these people who say that Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is a PE teacher and he's got no tactics. Well, he got no transfer window. So he's either going to fail like you think, or if we actually do start getting good results, he's doing it without the transfers he should have got. So it's all or nothing as far as I'm concerned for Solskjaer. Maybe Amazon should be doing a, a series on him this year. But look, let's start off with the Harry Maguire thing. Many of, the, many of you think Harry Maguire should be left out of the team for the Newcastle game tomorrow night. I'm included in that. We spoke about it in the preview. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer gave the answer that I would expect. I would, you know, I think Oli had a good press conference, to be honest, because he answered things bluntly and the right way. But on Harry Maguire, it looks like he may well not be playing against Newcastle. If you listen to what was said, he was asked about, well, look, you know, some people, Rio Ferdinand, ex-Man United legend, uh, especially as a centre-back, has come out and said that um, Maguire needs a rest. Um, some people think he should play through it. Oli, uh, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer said, look, Harry hasn't asked, he won't ask for a break. He's very resilient. Um, uh, he played very well against Belgium and then he gets sent off in the next game. And it just shows you, you know, how football changes. You know, he wants to play. Uh, he wants to come back from the last couple of games where he's not done so well. Well, look, I'm going to jump in on that. It's not a couple of games that Harry Maguire has been playing badly there's numerous games. This goes back to Spurs, the first game back in lock from lockdown in June. He's been bad for a very long time. It's not a couple of games, and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will know that. But he can't sit there as a manager and go, you know what, Maguire's been crap for a long time. He's had that problem in Greece. His head's not at it. He's a bloody mess at the moment. I don't care whether he wants to play or not. I ain't risking my job on him, would you? You know what I mean? He's not going to say that, is he? He's going to play the positive card. He's going to talk about Harry wanting to play. He's going to talk about resilience. Now, what he did say is that Harry Maguire got a knock just before he got sent off against England and they've got to run some tests. Now, look, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer there has either done something very clever where he's saying, look, he's got a knock, he can't play against Newcastle. So effectively, you're dropped without publicly dropping him. Or he's going to do what happens with Maguire where he does get a knock and he still plays him anyway. So Ole is set him, you know, to me, it's moved away from Maguire. Ole has set himself up now. Is this little knock the reason to get him out of the team because you're going to leave him out of the team? In which case, very, very, very clever. Or is this knock genuine and he'll be over the knock tomorrow and he'll start? He cannot start him. He can't start him. I mean, well, he can. Of course he can. Sorry. There'll be people in the live comments who say start him. He, of course he can start him. It's totally up to him. He's the manager. But in my view, and I'm sure in many of yours, Maguire needs to be dropped for two reasons. One, he shouldn't be the captain and we need leadership tomorrow. And two... He's just been playing so badly. He's got all sorts of issues. He needs to come out of that team. So hopefully, Ollie's talking about a knock because he said to Harry, look, you've got a knock. I don't want to play on Saturday anyway. Just take, you're not playing, right? Effectively, you're dropped, but I'm protecting you. You need, to, I'm telling you, Maguire, as your captain and as your manager, you're not playing in this game. I'll put it out publicly that you've got a knock. You have got a little bit of a twinge. We'd normally play you, but at the moment, you're not playing. That's the route I think he's got to go down. If he goes down the route of he's got a knock and he's playing, he's my captain. I don't think it'll hurt us tomorrow. I was thinking about this this morning in the shower. I was thinking about Harry Maguire in the shower. Um, I was thinking about this this morning. I don't think if Harry Maguire plays tomorrow, it will necessarily cost us the game. But it will cost us in the future. This, is a, this isn't just about Newcastle for me. This is about the next few weeks. This is about, are we going to change this situation we're in where we lack leadership, we didn't get players in, you take Maguire out of the team tomorrow, you give the captaincy to somebody else, we win the game, we move away from Maguire as captain and he focuses on coming back as a centre-back. I think it's about turning a page. It's not about Newcastle tomorrow because I think Maguire could play and we could win. But it's about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer taking hold of that team. And I think if he goes with, with Maguire tomorrow, he shows a weakness and he needs to show strength. So we'll see what happens with that. He was also asked about Paul Pogba. 
Bruno's message really made me love him even more. Make the man captain. He needs authority. If we want a United team, he's the only solution, in my opinion, says Adichio. Well, Oli did talk about Bruno. We'll talk about that in a minute. And we'll also talk about the... Um, We'll talk about the uh, the new players because he spoke about who might make their debut tomorrow as well. But he was also asked about Paul Pogba. The question being, Paul Pogba, very good question as well, should be asked of the manager of Manchester United. Paul Pogba's been on inter international duty. He said it's his dream to go and play with Real Madrid. How does that make you feel? And he said, look, Paul Pogba is going to be a Manchester United player for the next two years. He's focused on being a Manchester United player and I'm sure we'll get the best Paul Pogba out of the next two years. That answer from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is perfect, although it is flawed. He will not be here for the next two years because we'll be letting him go for free if he's here for two years. He's out of contract in two years. And also, we're not going to get the best out of Paul Pogba in the next two years, probably, because we haven't got the best out of Pogba for the last three or four years. And most of that was Oli wasn't the manager. So Oli's answering that question in the way he has to do it. Of course he's pissed off with Paul Pogba. Of course he's fed up of the bloody Paul Pogba circus every time he goes on international duty. But he's answered the question perfectly because, again, what do you want him to do? Oh, he gets on my tits every time he goes to bloody France. He's there gobbing off Billy Big Bollocks, causing problems. I tell you what, I wish we'd sold him in the summer and I got Grealish. And I'm sure that's probably maybe what Ollie thinks, but he plays the answer right. You know, he needs Pogba at the moment and Pogba knows that. So Ollie's got to play the game. Who to replace Maguire, Williams for right back or right wing back, says Tristan Govinda. We can talk about that later. I mean, to, to me, very it's a good question from Tristan. Watch the preview from yesterday. You'll see my team quite simply there. Lindelof comes in for Maguire in whatever way you want to play. Because if we're playing three centre-backs, Luke Shaw plays left centre-back. But that feeds lovely. Well done, Tristan. That feeds lovely into... I'm, I'm pumped up today, you know. I'm pumped up. I always, I always feel like... I feel good. I feel like... Uh, let, let's have a gym class. Come on. Yeah, come on, let's stretch it out. No, we're not really. We're not doing anything like that. But I do feel good today because the international break's gone. Get out. Get out, international break. No more international break for another month. And I can feel the goosebumps in my legs. That means I'm really excited. It's just not in my back. I feel really excited because football's back tomorrow. Proper football's back tomorrow. And I know some of you are scared. Don't be scared. Manchester United are back. They may let us down, but this is the football I love. You know, there's, there's talk of lockdown and everything again. Let's grab this football while we've got it. So I'm excited about the game tomorrow. I expect a response tomorrow. I think we've got good enough players tomorrow. And I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to pick the right team tomorrow. I think he's going to leave the players out that need to be left out. Others are going to get a chance. I think Donny van der Beek is going to get a chance. I'm excited about it. Um, bring it on. Bring it on. I'm pumped up. Lovely stuff. Um, anyway. He did speak about transfers. Um, the question was about transfers and the transfer window. He didn't really say anything about how... He didn't acknowledge it was a bad transfer window yet again. I mean, look, he's not going to sit there and go, that Edward Wood, what a prat. What a prat. I mean, who can succeed with him? It's like it's like, it's like like being a plumber and using bread sticks to screwdrivers. He's a bloody idiot. He can't say that. So what, he, what Ollie did say is, we're looking forward. Um, we've got the players in. On Palestri, very interesting. We need to pay to watch it, says Ewan Black. Yeah, I know. Very interesting what he said about Palestri. Now, remember, this has been put out by Manchester Evening News and other outlets that Palestri is a player to go straight into the first team squad. And I've said, and many of you have said, this is ridiculous. He's played 30 games in his whole career. He's Uruguayan 18-year-old who's never played in the Premier League before. And people think he's parachuting into the right wing. So I never felt he was one for now. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said that in relation to Pelestri, he's one for the future. He's not one for now. So look, we may see a little bit of him over the next few weeks, but he ain't, he's not going to go taking the right wing spot straight away. He's not ready. And he was never going to be ready. And I, I wonder about that. I wonder about that story. I wonder if it's one of those stories that we get dropped as a, as a fan base where just drop him this this week because in a week's time they won't care. But on that particular day, they'll get excited. And then in a week later, they won't be that bothered. It's a bit like the transfer window. We're all bloody furious. We're ready to, you know, burn bloody straw fields and everything like that. And then a couple of days later, we're like, oh, we might be getting potch. Let's forget that absolute joke of a transfer window, which will ultimately undermine our season no matter who the manager is. Let's talk about this new news. So I feel that with Palestri, that story that dropped last week, that he's going straight into the first team, was basically to mug you all off and make you think, oh, we've got a player for the first team. We haven't. The transfer window was a disaster. And we go into this season 
with what we had when that transfer window closed. You know, no chance. Because Palestri ain't ready. Ahmad Traore is not here till January. And Tellez is a good signing and Cavani is a risk. That's what we got out of that. We basically got a left back and a probably over the hill striker. That's what we got. We didn't get the right winger and we didn't get the centre back. And we've got to go with what we've got, which makes us weak, in my opinion. So Palestri won't be ready. Cavani can't play because of isolation. And Tellez is actually a bit of a doubt because what Oli said is he's played twice for Brazil, but he's just flown in from Sao Paulo yesterday, which is a hell of a flight. Um, and it's a big ask to get him to play tomorrow. Uh, not Ollie's words. That, that, it is a big ask. We've seen this before with Valencia when he used to be going playing in over in South America as well. It's a big, big, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of flying. It's his first couple of days with the team. Um, I think Tellez has got to go into the team tomorrow. I, I do, but we need it. We need a boost. We need something. And it, and I, I would play Tellez. In your opinion, do you think the board could also take a call on dropping, not dropping a player for a match as Ashish? I think this is a great point as well, Ashish. And you re reminded me from my shower this morning as well. I think I was just putting the radox under my arms to freshen up. And I thought about another thing about Harry Maguire as well is that how in control is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer of Manchester United? Because we know that Manchester United Football Club, the board members, and look, Ed Woodward gets called. We may as well just say Woodward because it might not be Woodward because there's a, there's more than Woodward on the board, but he is the chief executive. So when we're talking about the board, we generally mean, we normally use the name Woodward. So we know that Woodward and the Man United board like to stick their nose in to team affairs. This has happened before. Managers are told you're not getting that player, you're not getting that player, you're not selling that player. Managers don't get total control. And I wonder that if on the subject of Harry Maguire, it could come from the board, you're not dropping him or you are dropping him. You don't, you, do, you don't know. I mean, it's a hypothetical, you just don't know. But I think the reality is, whether, it's, whether the board is saying drop him, whether Oli's going to drop him, the, that's the right decision. It is the right decision. It's the right decision for the player. It's the right decision for the club. And ultimately, it's the, it gives us the best chance of winning the game. So we'll see what happens. How many Premier League goals will United concede, says Venkat? I don't know. And welcome to the Members Club, Tapawa. Thanks for joining. You can do that by clicking the Join button. You get your badge next to your name that changes every month. Thanks everyone who joins and supports the channel in that way. Really appreciative. I just want to shout out as well. We've I've still got loads more to talk about, about Oli. Um, the Premier League show is back this afternoon at half past three live. Me, Flex, and a new signing for the United Stand. You won't want to miss that. Premier League show is back. Um, basically talking about the Premier League in general uh, in an unbiased way. Um... And also with, 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 a, with a strong hint on Manchester United because we are a United channel. So make sure you, you watch that at half three. We'll be live. Not for the first time I have to question Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's man management, says Sean Finnerty. The time to strip captaincy and drop Harry was before the season. Waiting this long risks a more negative effect on the player's psyche, says Sean Finnerty. Well, I do agree with Sean on that. Um, to me, the funny thing was we lost to Sevilla in the Europa League semi-final. The next day, I and many of you said Maguire's at fault for both of those goals. He doesn't lead the team. He shouldn't be captain. A week later, he's in Greece and all that have, all that happened there. To me, the captaincy should have been took off, the, off him after Sevilla. He's not a captain and I'm amazed. And I think Sean's right. I back Oli. I do back Oli and I want him to do well, but it's a hope rather than a belief. And that's the thing. Hope is different to belief. Belief is something that you've got a very strong conviction will happen. Hope is just hope. Um... And he should have took the captaincy off him. That you know that is a mistake again. He should have took it off him because ultimately what, what Sean is saying is correct there. You look at those games, we've conceded 11 goals in three games and Harry Maguire has played every minute and has been captain. Like, he shouldn't be captain. He shouldn't probably be playing. I think that's a fair point, but he shouldn't be captain. Hey, Mark, if you could pick any manager to take over, who would it be? And if he had 200 million to spend, who would you buy? To Daniel Stout. Well, I'm not doing that in an Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer press conference reaction, Daniel. But um, what I would say is I wouldn't give it to Pochettino. I'd rather we went and got a Nagelsmann or the Ajax coach. Somebody who's got a very defined way of playing that hasn't managed in the Premier League before and can be our manager instead of taking some other Premier League clubs seconds. Um, who will be our captain if Maguire is not playing the Newcastle game? Bruno says advocate. You've answered your own question. And hi Mark, do you think United will sign anyone in January? Also, please follow back Owen United 06 on Twitter, says Owen. Thank you very much for the super chats there. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I don't think we'll sign anyone in January by the way. Um, I must just say the first question to Ollie was Rashford MBE. 
proud, obviously. Look, that, that question has to be asked. And we have to be proud. We don't, that sounds wrong. We don't have to be proud. We are proud of Marcus Rashford for what he's done. Um, he's doing an amazing thing. Um, and he's an MBE. He's going to be an MBE. And it's fantastic. Do you think United will sell any dead wood today, says Dan? No, I don't. And yeah, because it's the last day of a transfer window for the championship. No, we won't be selling anyone today. So Marcus Rashford getting the plaudits as usual for off the pitch stuff, which is fantastic. Um... I don't want to sound harsh here, and I don't think even Rashford would, would take it as harsh. What he's doing off the pitch, he's getting all the rewards, and not, not rewards, all the awards he deserves. It's absolutely amazing that a footballer's doing that. But I tell you what, when I was listening to it, and I'm sure other people were as well, all I'm thinking about is we need Marcus Rashford to start performing on the pitch. It's great that we're mentioning him in press conferences. It's great that he's mentioned all over social media because what he's doing is amazing. But... Is it selfish of me as a Man United fan to want him to start producing on the pitch? I don't think he played particularly well against it for, for England on, uh, on, on on international duty. And we need Marcus Rashford tomorrow night. We need a very focused and consistent Marcus Rashford back. And we needed him back weeks ago. We definitely need him back tomorrow. I think there is improvement there. I predicted at the start of the season that Rashford would have a big season. He needs to, st he needs to turn up tomorrow. Look, maybe Mason Greenwood will outshine him. I don't know. But Mason Greenwood's 18. Marcus Rashford. We've got no Martial. We've got no Cavani. You can't trust the Garlo and Dan James. Marcus Rashford tomorrow is really important for us. So, look, well done on the MBE. But what I was thinking is, God, Marcus Rashford's important for us tomorrow against Newcastle. Um, we took Cardiff second, says Robert McCormack. Fair point. Well made. Um... He also said that uh, he was also asked about the start to the season and he said, look, we've started badly. Ollie said, we've started badly. Newcastle have started well. We've got to go there and dominate and show that we can deal with setbacks. Um, he said it was embarrassing against Spurs. We didn't deal with it when it went to 10 men and the hope went out of the team when it went to 3-1. That, that, that worries me. You know, when Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer says... The hope went out of the team when it went to 3-1. That's, that's, I mean, he's right. I, you know, and again, I applaud Oli for saying it, but it does, does it not expose him as a manager? Well, of course it does. But unfortunately, I think he's right to bring it out because it's been a problem for a very long time. Manchester United, pretty much since Alex Ferguson retired, so eight years, um, we, our heads drop when things don't go our way. I said this when we, and I don't, I don't want to think about the Spurs game, but I said this. Just because you go down to 10 men doesn't mean you have to lose the game, let alone get smashed. Like when you when you go, to, I've seen teams go down. I've seen Mourinho's teams go down to 10 men and, and, and be losing and win. So you don't have to lose a game just because you go to down to 10 men. And when Oli comes out and says when they get that third goal and it's 3-1, um, you know, the hope went. Well, we conceded another three goals. We're Manchester United at Old Trafford just you know, Spurs aren't world renowned for being, you know, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Man City, Liverpool. They're not, you know, they're not traditionally big scorers. And yet we, you know, we're down to 10 men at 2-1 and we lead, concede four goals and, and, and give in. And that is, to me, Ollie's clever doing that. I don't know whether he's being clever, but he's pushing it to the players. It's like, you know, I can send the tactics out, but I can't build the personality. I can't keep the head up. And look, some people say, well, you, well the manager should do that. No, it's, some of these players have been here before Oli was even here. Some of these players have been to Huddersfields and Newcastles and you know those results and more and heads drop. We've got, and some of them have, some of them are established first teamers. When the going gets tough, the heads drop. And that isn't to me a lot to do with Oli Gunnar Solskjaer because you can't teach it. I'm not naming names, it's not the time. But there are players in that team that when things go wrong, their heads drop. They're very good players, but when things go wrong, their heads drop. You can't teach that. Some of these players have been at the club for a long time. Some of them are very experienced internationals. And when things go wrong, their heads drop. They're just the wrong personality for this football club at this moment in time. They do really well at Real Madrid and Barcelona and Liverpool, where they win most games. They don't need their heads to drop. When the going's good, they're good players. But I was thinking about this as well. Manchester United need a certain type of player at the moment. We're nowhere near winning titles. We, you know, it's almost talent's important, but also the person inside's important. We need players. You know, I look at someone like Declan Rice. I know he's probably not ready yet, but look at his personality. Good player, but also a fighter for 90 minutes. United need, we haven't got enough of those players. I think Bruno's one of those players. I think Van der Beek is one of those players. 
I even think someone like a McTominay and a Fred is one of those players, but are they good enough? It's an interesting one. So I thought Oli was brave to bring it out that the hope went at 3-1 and that score doubled. We must get Maurizio Sarri, excellent manager, says Hooker. I think he is a good manager, but I don't think Man United fans would stick with him, to be honest with you. Um, and I, I liked this from Oli as well. He was asked about, um, he said that, look, in res what's the response to the loss? He says, we've got to get on with it. And I know people won't like that because some people want us to moan about that loss and say it's unacceptable because it is. But on the other hand, he's got a game tomorrow. He's got a game on Tuesday. He's got Chelsea a week on Saturday, a week tomorrow. You've got to get on with it. And he said, look, external factors, they're always going to look for a chance to divide uh, and cause division amongst ourselves. Um, and they'll take that opportunity. And he mentioned Bruno Fernandes and he said, look, it's not going to happen. They're not going to divide us. We've got a good group of players who want the best, who are together. And um, that is exactly... Um, sorry, I think we've had a blurry camera here. Sorry about that. Um, don't know what went wrong there. Um, so Bruno is exactly the sort of player that that we need at the club and that he, you know, this division that people are trying to cause. And I've been speaking about this all week and you've been speaking about it as well. These stories about Bruno falling out with Oli and not liking Oli and this, that and the other. I and mean, there's another story I need to talk to you about in a minute. It's going to be there. Of course, it's going to be there because that's just what it's that's just what it's like when you're a Manchester United manager. But. Good of Oli to come out and say that, look, these external factors, they're going to look for divisions. And look, you can say it's the press, but it's also people within our fan base. There are people within our fan base who are very vocal about what a crap manager Oli is, how this player is better than that, how this player who's total shit, I'm going to stand by him, but this player who's better than him, I'm going to shit on him. There's division in the fan base. And I think Oli's talking more globally about, you know, the press, the Pochettino, the Bruno story. But there's people in our fan base who, who do it. They love it. They do it. They divide. They try and cause toxicity. And people will be saying, well, so do you, Mark. Well, but no, well, well yeah, yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe I do because the fan base is divided. I think we're all guilty of it. Um, and I'm, I'm not disrespecting people who are Ollie out. But ultimately, we can't moan about the press dividing uh, and, and causing a problem when we've been at it for years. And you've got to look at the root of that problem. Because we're all, you know, I want Maguire to be dropped tomorrow. Some people could say that's divisive. Well, of course it is, because some people will want him to play. I back the manager. Some people don't back the manager. I don't get involved in Pogba's better than Bruno or Bruno's better than Pogba. Bruno, I prefer, but I like Pogba. And the same with Martial and Rashford. I don't really have any agendas against any players. There's no player in that squad that I'm like, can't stand you, don't pick you. There's players that I wouldn't pick at the moment because I don't think they're good enough. But I think most of them can be good enough. I mean, if Dan James could play what he likes, like does on my FIFA career mode, we'd be bloody laughing, I'm telling you. But unfortunately, FIFA's FIFA and this is real life. But the division in the fan base is um, is not something, in my opinion, that we need to uh, <coughs> moan about um, because it's caused by the fact that we're Manchester United Football Club and we're absolutely nowhere near where we should be. And that's the cause of this. And the cause of this goes back to the owners and the people running the club. You know, the frustration at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, well, they appointed him. This frustration at the lack of transfers, well, they didn't buy the players. The frustration at the signings of the players that we've got, they bought them. The frustration at the fact that we've still got loads of Deadwood on big money, well, they've given them the contracts out. All of our anger and frustration and, and division as a fan base goes back to the fact that the people who've been running this football club since Sir Alex Ferguson retired have failed on a huge level consistently. In fact, the only consistency... Consistency is a word that Manchester United are not in a happy relationship with. We just can't find any consistency and we've not been able to do it since Sir Alex. The only thing we're consistent at is being badly run as a football club. Consistently, we make bad decisions. Um, and look, you know, I don't want to talk about this. I want Cavani to be a good, important player for Manchester United. But I said it at the time and I'll say it again. I really hope the risk of Cavani works because it is a risk without a shadow of a doubt um, Cavani is a massive risk and you know you can say it's not but I'll tell you why I'm right because if he wasn't a risk and he was a player that we wanted he'd be playing against Newcastle tomorrow because he's been a free agent since June and we could have bought him in July we could have got him in August we could have got him in September and he'd be playing against Newcastle in fact he would have been playing against Brighton and, and Spurs but we didn't because he was never on the list and he was a panic buy on the last day of the window and that's why we've had to wait two weeks for his isolation to be over and that's why he can't play against Newcastle because he's a panic signing 
He's a Falcao. He's a Di Maria. He's an Alexis Sanchez. He's an expensive risk that not many other clubs wanted to do. And it's this board again. And they'll tell you, we're building for the future. They'll tell you that you know, we, we, we're, on, we're on track. We've got a three-year plan. But they keep going back doing the same stupid, desperate decisions that they've been doing for the last seven years. And they caused the division. And I hope Cavani does well. And I'm excited about Cavani. But I was excited about Falcao. And it was a disaster. I was excited about Alexis Sanchez. And it was a disaster. So excuse me for being excited, but also being very pissed off that we're doing these sort of deals again. The striker we wanted, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer thought he was going to get, is now the best striker in Europe. And his name is Erling Haaland. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, this time last year, thought he was going to get him. And he didn't. Dortmund did. And then a year later, what's our striker? Edison Cavani, that nobody else wants, and we're buying him on the last day of the transfer window. So it does annoy me. And when we talk about division, I think the, the division, the, there's always a root cause. And the root cause is this bloody board. And I'm not, I'm not against people who are only out. I'm not against people who've got you know, frustrations about other things. But ultimately, everything leads back to the fact that we've been consistently ran as a bad club for a very long time. And it pisses me off. It really does. Um, so what else did he talk about? Uh, Maguire we've done. Um, also, a good question was that we've actually not lost away in the Premier League since January. So, you know, all these games that we've lost have been home games, Crystal Palace, and, and I say all of them, too. Oli himself said Bruno Fernandes has only um, experienced defeat in the Premier League twice since February, uh, and they've come in quick succession, Crystal Palace and Spurs. Now, both those games have been at home, which made me think, would we have lost those games with fans in the ground? But I think we would. You know, we lost to Palace last year with fans in the ground, and Spurs were always going to win that game, weren't they? So I don't think we can talk about that. But we've, we've not lost away in the Premier League since January. And I can't think which game that was. Was it, was it Arsenal, maybe? But um, So, look, what have we learned from Newcastle last year where we won away? Um, he said, well, look, you know, the reality is we've learned a lot. I think we have learned a lot. And I think tomorrow is PSG's a big game. Chelsea's a big game. Leipzig's a big game. Arsenal's a big game. But tomorrow is almost bigger. Not because it's first, but because... It's the first game after what happened with Spurs. It's the first game of this squad that we're going to have to work with this season without the Sanchos or the centre-back. Um, this team has got to respond and this manager is in a situation of danger. And a lot of people talk about that. Tomorrow's massive. If he loses that game, I think there's a lot of people who, who don't think he's the right man. I think there's a lot of people who do want to back him. And I think there's even more people who are just like, I need to see what's going to happen after what's happened a couple of weeks ago. And I think tomorrow is almost like the acid test, really. If we lose that game, I think a lot of people are going to go, look, this is it. There's no point. So I think tomorrow is is the, is, is a massive, massive game. Um, hi, Mark. What? Who do you think has been our best defensive player in the post-Fergie era? Also, do you believe Bruno is our best signing in this era? Says Miron. And uh, Dave Davis says, Hi, Mark, just remember, Oli in or Oli out, you can't please everyone, but at least you back your opinion up with reasons why, unlike some. Keep it up, says Dave Davis. Mate, I, I absolutely am very aware that this channel is a fan channel and that you, you've got to cater for both sides. Obviously, I'm always going to have my opinion, but look, I get it. I, if you're Oli out, I get it. And maybe some of you want me to be Oli out and maybe over time you'll get me there. But at the moment, I'm not. But I get why you are. Um, I hope you can come back to being Ollie in, but I also realise that's going to be about getting results. Um, so look, we're, we're, there's no need to be falling out whether you're Ollie in or you're Ollie out. It's just to me, we're, we all want what, we all want what's what's best for Manchester United, and in a very very short period of time, we're going to find out which is the, which is the best way. Because if he loses some of these games, he's, he's not going to last. Pochettino is waiting. Mark, I agree and want Cavani to do well, but I hope that doesn't encourage the Glazers and Woodward to go for such deals in the future. Sarab, they're always going to go for them, aren't they? Because they've done it again. Our best defensive player in the post-Fergie era, uh, and do you think Bruno's the best signing in this era? I think Miron's probably... I think Bruno's got to be the best signing since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. Our best defensive player... Bloody hell, it's so hard. I'd say wan is probably the best defensive player we've bought. He's just in really bad form, but... The thing I'd say about wan is he, wasn't a, he was going to be my player of the year up until lockdown. So, yeah, he has been a good signing. I don't say Luke Shaw because I'll just get into trouble for it. But uh, Grealish would have been great, far better than Pogba's as Lino. I mean, look, 
you can't you can't moan about the realities. I think we would have got Grealish if Pogba had left in the summer, but it didn't happen because of COVID. So we we are where we are. Um, if you're joining a little bit late, it looks like Harry Maguire will not play against Newcastle tomorrow. One thing nobody ever saw coming, actually, which was an obvious thing, is this talk that he might be injured, which is just a nice way of dropping him. So hopefully that will be the case. I'm not wishing injury on him, but he, he can't play tomorrow. The, you know, somebody else needs to have the captain's armband. Now, the interesting thing is, do you think if Harry Maguire plays to, doesn't play tomorrow, Bruno will get the captain's armband? Because I don't. I don't think he'll give him the captain's armband. He can't give it to Pogba. That would be worse than playing Harry Maguire because if you give Pogba the captaincy, he's played crap for the first three games of the season and he's just been on international duty and said, it's my dream to play for Real Madrid. You cannot give Paul Pogba the captaincy even if you think he'd be a good captain. And I think in some ways he might not be a bad captain, but you just can't give it him. So if it's not going to be Maguire and it's not going to be Pogba, do you give it... I mean, it should be Bruno... But I just don't think he'll give it Bruno. So, I mean, you can't give it to somebody like Lindelof. David De Gea, is it not really a captain? Rashford's too inconsistent. I mean, I've, I, we did this a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? We did a show about the top who should be captain in Man United. And I said Bruno. And I think the candidates were De Gea, Maguire, Bruno, Pogba and Rashford. So it should be one of those five. Uh, but we, I think it's got to be Bruno. He's the leader of the team. And if you're building a new future, you've got to give it to Bruno, in my opinion. He could give it to Matic as a safe bet, but what's the point? What's the point in taking it off Harry Maguire and then just giving it to a safe person until Maguire comes back? Which is, I think, what will happen. So Matic is probably a good shout. I think that probably will happen. But the three Ps need to be taken care of as well. The three Ps are Poch, Pogba and players. This was being spoken about this morning. I think it was in The Independent. Um, they're basically saying that Poch is on standby, which we know. The players like Oli but don't trust him and don't think he's tactically good enough. And Pogba is obviously looking to get a move in the summer. So Oli's future is very much dependent on the net on the three Ps. There's this division already now. Look, the, the thing about a news story is it doesn't have to be true, but it will it will stick in people's head. Um, you know, so people will now think that Bruno has fell out with Oli, even if he hasn't. So he's got that issue with the players he's definitely got the issue with Pochettino because whether Pochettino is going to be United's manager or not he's free he's available and Oli's in a bit of trouble and obviously Pogba does want to leave at some point and his dream is to play for Real Madrid so that's what Oli's battling against at the moment as well the three P's uh, we'll see what happens with that keep in mind that we're, when we're frustrated saying Oli out or ex-player out is easier because it might lead to change while owners out is a pipe down says Sean Finnerty making some good points today Sean please smash a like on the video if you're watching live by the way um, I'm still not fully convinced about Bruno, says DK. Well, I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's an interesting point. I mean, he's clearly our best player, but to say you're not convinced by him, um, I, I suppose you'd, you, you know, you'd probably want more. And I, I would agree that Pogba over the uh, Bruno over the last sort of four or five games hasn't been at his very best. But I still think he's our uh, our best player. Um, Kante spell out with Lampard, says Charlie Slade. Kante is one for me. I would take him at United. But again, are you taking another player that's just past their best? I think you're not... You know, this is the same with Cavani. It's the same with Matic. It's the same with Alexis Sanchez. I'm not saying they're bad signings, but I think Man United... And, and under Oli, has been very clear. It's the same mentality I've got, really. Oli doesn't want old players. He wants players that are ready to take the step up to a big club who are at the right age group. So the wan the Bruno Fernandes, the, um, um, try and think of somebody else that we've done. I don't think Harry, Harry Maguire to a certain extent, but he was 27. Um, but those sort of players, you know, Grealish was a player, Donny van der Beek, yeah. So um, those sort of players, Erling Haaland, Jadon Sancho, very specific type of player that he's looking for. The younger player who's ready to take that step up. Don't think he wants the Cantes and you know the deals that we've done in the past before he came in, the Matic, the Falcao, the Sanchez. Um, but he's ended up with one in Cavani. Definitely Oli in. People have short memories and forget that given the right player, he steered us miraculously to third when it looked impossible, says Dave Davis. Well, I'll say what I said at the start of the video. The great exciting thing for me, and I am excited about the game tomorrow. I'm excited that we've got football back. I can't wait. Doesn't mean we're going to win. I'm not guaranteeing we're going to win. I'm just excited. But the other thing that really pleases me as well is that 
It's sink or swim. It's all or nothing. It's do or die. It's all the cliches because if we start winning games, people are going to have to sit, sit down. And when, you know, the PE teacher stuff's going to have to stop because he hasn't got Sancho and he hasn't got the centre-back and anybody with a football brain knows that he's been hung out to dry. Whether it's your favourite manager, whether it's Oli, Poch, that transfer window, compared to all our rivals, has put two arms behind his back. If he's going to get results against Arsenal, Chelsea, PSG, Newcastle, Everton over the next few weeks, he's going to have to do it with players that he already had a year ago. So it's going to have to be about working with what he's got and those players know how to work with Oli because they've been with him for a while. So tactically, he's going to have to deliver with the players that he's got without the players that he needed. Um, so it's sink or swim. And, I, you know, ultimately, I don't like the scenario. I think the board have put him in a bad situation. But look, we're going to find out if he's good enough. Um, and I hope he is, because if he does deliver results with these players, it shows that he is a manager that we can get behind and believe in. But if he doesn't, to those who don't believe in him, then it's going to very quickly get exposed. And we know, look, it's a very unique situa situation. I think with Mourinho, he got sacked, but there wasn't a manager waiting. And when Van Hal, yeah, it happened in the summer. But with we are in October and there is a viable manager sat there waiting for this job. And that means that United know that. And it means that if results don't come in, the pressure will go up. So it's an interesting time. Thanks everyone for watching. Should wan also start tomorrow, says RBI Studio. I think wan has got to start tomorrow. You know, uh, St. Maximum's a fantastic player. I wouldn't want to see St. Maximum running at Brandon Williams or Timothy Fozu Menza. You've got to, you've got to go with wan Um and hope that he can start to try and find some form. But if he dropped him, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with it either because he has been performing very, very badly. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. We are back this afternoon at half past three with our Premier League show. Make sure you watch it. I've uh, got a new uh, person coming onto the channel. And also, um, we've been looking forward to doing this video for a long time. We enjoy it. Um, Cooking with Goldbridge is on the Mark Goldbridge channel. It's going up at one o'clock for those who like it. And uh, I'll see you all in a bit. Thanks for watching.